let's talk about trigonometry equations and identities lesson number two solving second degree trigonometric equations we're going to talk about solving second degree equations where the power of the trig function is two so an example here is sine squared x minus three x three sine x equals zero now remember when we we talk about sine squared x when we see it like that that actually means sine of x all squared and that will be useful as we solve these equations. So let's take a look at factoring trigonometric expressions. Just as with polynomial expressions, trig expressions can be factored. The ability to factor the trig expressions is useful in, uh, for two reasons. So solving trig equations and also proving trig identities, which we'll see later. So let's take a look at factoring. So we have trig expressions that, that need to be factored. We can apply three basic factoring techniques. We can look at the common factor. We can take a look to see if there's a special case of a difference of two squares, and perhaps looking at trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to zero. So let's take a look at this first example here. Let's try factoring eight tan a plus four. Can we find a common factor among these two terms? We have two terms there, there's one, and here's the other one right there. So if we take a look at the common factor, it looks like the common factor of 4. So 4, and we'll put a bracket here. And then we say 4 times what makes 8 tan a? Well, that's 2 tan a. And then 4 plus what makes positive 4? So this is 1. All right, let's see if we can factor this expression. We have sine squared x minus 3 sine x. But remember that sine squared x can be thought of as sine x all squared minus 3 sine x. So in fact, we can see there's a sine x in each one of these terms. And so when we factor sine x out, sine x times sine x is what becomes sine squared x, so sine x. And then minus this sine x has been factored out, so this is 3. All right, what about part C? 4 sine squared x minus 1. Well, this is a difference of squares. If you remember, we had things like x squared minus 9, and we could factor that into x plus 3, x minus 3. And we can do the same thing here. We have a square term here and a square term there. And so let's take the square root of 4 sine squared x. That's going to be 2 sine x. And then we can add the square root of 1 here, that's 1. And in another bracket, we have 2 sine x minus 1. I'm just going to erase this so that that doesn't confuse us. So we have 2 sine x plus 1 times 2 sine x minus 1 in brackets. Now, does this result in 4 sine squared x minus 1? Well, 2 sine x times 2 sine x is 4 sine squared x. And then we have minus 2 sine x and plus 2 sine x, which makes 0. And 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. What about this? Cosecant squared x. Now this is in the form of x squared minus 3x minus 28. If we saw this, we might be able to factor it a little easier. So let's take a look at factoring this. So we're looking at two numbers that multiply to get 20, negative 28, but add to get negative 3. Let's see if we can find that. What about 7? x minus 7 times x plus 4. Let's see if that works x squared x times 4 is 4x minus 7x is negative 3x and then negative 7 times 4 is negative 28 so this does work now remember what we did was we replaced the cosecant x as maybe th this different x and when we find that different x is going to be we could put this cosecant x back in for that different x so that means that cosecant x minus 7, and this x is cosecant x, so we can say cosecant x plus 4. And then if we multiply through, we would get this term again. Cosecant x times cosecant x is cosecant squared x. Then we have 4 cosecant x minus 7 cosecant x, that's negative 3 cosecant x. And of course, negative 7 times positive 4 is negative 28. Well, what about this one? Well, perhaps we can change this so that it looks a little bit different. And instead of using this 
cos x that maybe scares us a little bit, we can say we'll just call it this red x, this red x. So it looks a little bit different than that x, but it's this red x. And if we were to, to factor that, we might be able to, right? If we take 2 times negative 4, that's negative 8. And what we're looking for is we're looking for two values that multiply to get negative 8, but add to get 7. So let's see what those, those numbers are. So I think we can say it would be positive 8 here and negative 1. I think that would work. Now if we were to factor this, then what I'm going to do is make this a little box. It is a factor by grouping, but I'm going to do it this way. So we have our, oops, remember this should be squared, right? So we have 2x squared, we have our negative 4 here, and we're going to split these two into these two green ones. So the green ones is going to be plus 8x and minus 1x. And now we're going to factor just by columns and rows. So down this column we have 2x that is a factor, and this way we have negative 4, oh sorry, just positive 4, positive 4 as a factor. This is x here as a factor, going this way, the common factor of 2x squared and negative x. So here we'll say negative 1 times x is negative 1x, negative 1 times 4. So it looks like we have these two things as factors. We have 2x minus 1 and x plus 4. And you can verify that 2x minus 1 in brackets times x plus 4 in brackets is equal to 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. Well, remember that we took this cos x and we replaced it with a red x. So let's go back and put those back in. So that means that we can say that is 2 cos x minus 1 multiplied by cos x plus 4. So remember, we replaced the, x, the cos x with, neg with this red x. And there you have it. That's the factored form. Let's take a look at class example number 2 and consider this equation of 2 sine squared x equaling 1 minus sine x. Let's use a graphical approach. So I'll bring up my calculator and make the, I'll make my y1 equal to the left side, 2 sine squared x, and I'll make my y2 equal to the right side, 1 minus sine x. Let's bring up our calculator. We have y equals, and we have to put 2 and a sine squared x, so we're going to put a bracket here. Bracket sine x squared, and we not need to square this, so square that, and then on for the second one, we have y2 is equal to 1 minus sine x, and then let's just change the window. So the window is going to be from, we'll say 0 to 2 pi, so because we're working with radians here, so 2 pi. And then let's make the scale a nice one, like uh, 30 degrees. So we'll say um, pi divided by 6. The y minimum, uh, let's just make it negative 2. And the maximum we'll make uh, 2. And let's take a look at this graph. So it looks like within 2 pi, we have one solution right there. One solution right there, and one solution right there. Well, let's see if we can find that. What we'll do is we'll find the intersection. So second trace, find the intersection, and let's see. First curve, second curve, and then we'll make a guess, and it finds that spot there. So we'll store that to an x value, I guess. OK, so our answer that we got from the, the graph is there. And remember that there's a pi right in there. So we're going to divide by pi. And then we have our fraction. And we'll go to math fraction. We'll see what that fraction is. So 5 over 6. So we can see then that 
this is going to be 5. One answer is going to be 5 over 6 pi. It's going to be 5 pi over 6. That's one answer. Let's find the other one. We have, so back to the graph. Let's find the other intersection. And the guess needs to be over here. So let's move over here if we can. And we get that answer there. Let's quit out of here and make sure that we have that answer. So second minus here. There's the answer. Remember that there's a pi inside that, so we're going to divide by pi. We get that answer. Change that decimal to a fraction. We have one sixth. So now we know then that that's this is one of the answers, and the left answer is one over six pi. So we have those two answers. Are there any more solutions? Oh, you know what? I think it might reach right there. So let's see if we can, I'm going to change the window here to make it a little bit clearer. So we'll change this y max to 4 maybe. And then when we graph it, and it looks like it touches up there. So let's see if we can find that. So second, trace the, cal the intersection, first curve, second curve, and let's make the guess over to here. Let's see if we can find this point right here. Yeah, we have this answer here, so let's quit. We have this answer, second negative, whoops. Second negative to get the answer. Let's make sure that it's the one we want, yes. And remember there's a pi hidden inside it, so we'll divide by pi. And now we can change that to a fraction, and we get, it's not changing to a fraction. To me, it's pretty clear that it's 1.5, so this, answer here is going to be 1.5 pi, or in other words, it's going to be equal to 3 pi over 2. So you have these three answers. Okay, so what is the general solution? Well, those are the three answers within 1 from 0 to 2 pi, but remember that this could keep going. So in fact, the general solution is x is equal to pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, where n can be any integer. And then again, we have x is equal to 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, where n can be any integer. And another x that could be 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, where n could be any other integer.